Question number eight is another beautiful question that has been framed from EMI. And there is a square loop having resistance R, side is L by L, and initially it is pushed with a velocity V0. Mind you, it's not being dragged upon, it's pushed. And you know, as soon as it enters into, induction would begin and that would retard it. And induction would be there in the entering phase as well as in the exiting phase. But if the initial velocity is sufficiently large, then it's able to exit. Now, based on that, we need to choose the correct option of I, V, F, and I. That's the case. So, first of all, let's talk about velocity. You see, when it is entering, during the entering phase, the EMF would be BLV and the current would be BLV by R. Now, let's try to see the force, which is b i l so b square l square v by r and this is minus m v d v by d x because we need to calculate in this way and this v and v gets cancelled so eventually what happens is say let me do it here d v is minus b square l square by m r d x and now let's integrate at x equals to 0, velocity is v0. At x equals to x, the velocity is v. So that was a straightforward calculation. And this would give us v equals to minus of b square l square x by mr plus of v0. This is how the velocity changes with respect to position. And it's varying linearly, minus mx plus c pattern you could see. Now, during the entering phase, the velocity decreases and when it is well inside, there would be no induction because the flux is constant. So, the velocity would be constant because no induction means no current, no retardation. And again, during the retarding phase, the velocity would decrease by the same way. So, you get B as the correct option. That was about velocity. How about I? I is b l v by r and the variation would be same except for the fact the direction of the current would reverse during entering and exiting phase. So, see the straight line variation, but during entering there is one direction, the exiting there is other direction. So, a option is correct. So, d would be eliminated. How about the direction of the force? Although in terms of magnitude it is fine, but you see, during entering, the force is retarding and even during exiting, the force is retarding. So, the direction of the force has to be same in the negative direction, while here, the option is given in the positive direction. So, C would not be the correct one. So, the correct option for eighth question would be A and B. Now, let us go to the next question, question number 9. Question number 9 is another beautiful question which is made from RC circuit and it is all about charging discharging circuit here. It is a nice combination. Now, the voltmeter and amp meter are ideal and if the voltmeter is ideal, this is going to be open circuit. So, the upper circuit and the lower circuit would be independently parallel with this. And if you see the time constant for both, that will be 1 second each. Now, we need to see the reading of voltmeter at 0 and infinity. Now, let us try to see. At t equals to 0, you see the capacitor would be shorted. So, it is something like this. And 50 kilo ohm, it would be something like this. This is 5 volt. This is the diagram at t equals to 0 and we need to find the potential difference between this and this. Now, if I call this as 0, this would be at 0 and this would be 5. So, here is 5 and the voltmeter positive terminal is connected below and the negative terminal is connected above. That means, the reading of voltmeter at t equals to 0 would be minus 5 volt. The first option is matching. 
let's verify for the second. For the second, if you see at t equals to infinity, the capacitor becomes open circuited and this is the situation. Now you see that the whole potential difference will occur here and here. So that will be plus minus 5 volt here and that would be plus minus 5 volt here. And now you could see the positive terminal is connected here, negative here. So at t equals to infinity, the voltmeter will show a reading of plus 5 volt. So option number A is correct. Now let's try to see option number B. For option number B, what we have to do is say reading of voltmeter is zero at t equals to log two second. Now the voltmeter reading, you just have to visualize this as open circuit. Now that would be this potential difference minus of this potential difference. So I'll be calling it as C1, R1, R2, C2. So first of all, this potential difference, so that would be E1 minus E raised to the power minus of T by tau for both the time constant is same and this potential difference will be minus of E E raised to the power minus of T by tau the potential difference across resistance and if you put the value of T equals to log 2 you would get exactly the reading of voltmeter to be 0 so this is also a correct option. You see the values are so beautifully placed that you get the value to be zero. Now next reading of amp meter becomes one by E of initial value at one second. Let's see, the upper one will say C1, R1. The reading of amp meter would be this current and this current. So that will be E by R1, E raised to the power minus T by tau plus E by R2, E raised to the power minus T by tau, the time constant being same. Now. That's very straightforward. After one second, even the time constant is one, that will be e raised to the power minus one. So this comes out to be correct. And reading of amp meter is zero at t equals to infinity. Even this is correct. At infinity, this would be open. So no current along this branch, no current along this branch due to this. Eventually, leading the current through this branch is zero. So option number D is also correct. As I said, the values are so beautifully placed and it comes out to be so wonderful numerical calculation. That's about question number nine. Now let's proceed to question number 10.